Okay, there we go. It was saying we weren't live. It was saying connecting with guys. You heard behind the scene, okay? Now we are connected. Our screen was saying connecting, connecting, connecting. So I guess we're connected. Well, we told you that we would come to you live from South Africa, and we are live from South Africa. Um, thank God for the whole what it takes behind the scene to and Brandy and Terry and Shirley, the whole crew that it takes to um, bring this life to you. Ashton's there in South Africa with his mom and dad. How's this supposed to work? Just keep talking because it's on you right now. Okay. There you are. I was like, where are you? Now can I hear you? Hi, hi, Doc, and hi, everyone. Can you all hear me clearly? I hear you clearly now. Well, I've only been up since 4, between 3.45, about 3.45 this morning. And um, time with the Lord, listening to the Lord, talking to me about the times and the age and where we are. And for those that are watching that have hopped on, I know some people at 8 o'clock already had to be at work. But uh, we delayed our normal morning time because everybody, Ashton, is there at the property, at the Vision House South Africa. Some of you that have been watching, like, what's the big deal with the exiles? Same thing, too. I was also no longer called the place Pressy Center, South Africa. Street that will be going on, not just be center. Uh, to mentor young girls as well and um, that have been rescued out of trafficking. But Ashton's business were in house South Africa in December, Christmas. Um, the grass is up to the ankles because the were out since December. So we don't want you to think that, uh, and we will be in occupy of the next week. So going through the way things work in South Africa, the way Ashton explained to me a little about a mid or the week or so before Christmas. Everything, Ashton, you can explain that and then things don't start back up again until January as far as the courts and the register that the house is occupancy since December. Uh, can you explain about and take us inside and you know, Okay. Dr. Bailey, I'm struggling to hear you. Um, if you could just repeat that. That's why the grass is so long, because it's all December and January, and now we're in February. Just explaining the grass. And if you can walk around and show us how big Compact yard is. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I think I kind of heard the um, what the request was. Okay, so as you can see, the grass is pre pretty long behind me, and um, you know once 
just before uh, Christmas, around the 16th or so rather of December, uh, we shut down or everything closes in South Africa because of um, the Christmas period and things like that. So obviously the garden service and everybody are just getting back into, um, they just started getting back into um, the swing right now because obviously beginning of the year we had another uh, wave of COVID and things. So the companies have not really been working, hence the grass. And then I, I want to show you how huge this pool is, but you know, please mind it. it uh, we've had severe rains over the past two weeks here in South Africa. Um, this, this pool is normally spotless, um, spotlessly blue, if I could say. Um, and obviously it's, it's turned a little bit green uh, because of the heavy rains that we've had. And obviously during this uh, period, everything was closed. Um, in obviously a lot of companies and businesses were closed uh, during this uh, period, if I could say. So I, I'm going to take you around now and start to show you, um, you know, the property live. I'm here right now. My family is inside the house. Um, the agent and everyone is here. Uh, you know, we're just making sure the final details are all good and, you know, we're happy. And I think Doc just kicked off. But I'll, do, I'll still carry on and just show you guys, um, you know, what, um, what the property looks like and things like that. So, and then we'll give time for Doc to hop on. So please once again mind the the swimming pool that's behind me it is green at the moment purely because like i said the heavy rains have affected us uh, really badly over the past two weeks we've had non-stop rain um and then obviously the companies and staff were closed so the pool companies and things will be in here next week uh come um, on monday actually to start cleaning up and maintaining on a monthly or weekly basis so this pool will actually be spotless but if you see the size of this pool is incredibly big. Um, I'm just gonna take a step down here just to show you guys, um, you know, what, what the pool, or what the size of the pool is. So basically I'm standing at the edge of the pool um, and that right there behind me is the pool. And if you look, it looks pretty large and trust me, it is incredibly huge. Um, so yeah, that that's the, that's the, well, we call it like an athletic pool because it's so big. Um, so I'm gonna start to take you guys around the house. The grass is obviously long because of, um, like I said, the lockdown period and things like this. And this yard is just incredibly huge. Um, so if you see there, it's just, it's, it's, it's huge, it's, it's really nice. Um, the garden service will be here uh, next week cleaning up and uh, you know we'll make sure that the yard and things are being maintained um, so this it goes all the way to the back I'm going to hold it like that so you can see behind me as well and then I'll take you guys for a tour inside so behind me that's what we call a backyard um, so that that yard basically goes all the way obviously around the back of the house. And then we have this entire space here. That's pretty big as well. Um, you know, to do, uh, put up some nice plants and landscaping, things like that. There's a little fruit tree here. I'm not sure if you can see that and it is bearing fruit. I'm not sure what fruit tree this is. Oh, really? Yeah, and it, lemon tree or avocado. No idea, but it is huge. Or mango, um, mango. It might be a mango, because look at the size of that. Oh, those are mangoes! Oh my gosh! And this tree, Yolanda is and Brandy, full. those are mangoes. Look at them, and it's full of mangoes, Yolanda and Brandy. Those are mango lovers on the ting. And you see, see it's in one out. To show I want you everybody. Guys. Oh, I see. I see how big it is too. Hey, Doc, this is your house. Am I allowed to pull this out? You can pull the mango. <laughs> it's not my house. It's our house. It's the Vision House. The vision House. Oh, actually, I don't know what this is. Is it not mango? No. What is that? Is that papaya? No, it's not papaya. What is that? Pull another one. Oh. Pull the other one. You know, Africa has so many different types of the fruit. I'm sure Val knows. Yeah, I have no idea what this is, but it is a fruit. I know that much. 
uh, I don't know if you can do this. I'm going to send this to you and Brandy. Val just sent a picture of what the pool looks like when it's clean. Maybe I can send it to your phone and you can just hold it up or something. Um, I'm going to send it to Brandy too. I don't know if she's able to do anything. Um, let's go in here. Oh, you know what I can do? Hold on. I can do it on my side, I'm sure. I didn't think about that. So everybody can see. Oh, can you get, I think you guys can see this. There you go. They can see what the pool looks like. Oh, yeah. There that is what the pool looks like. That's the standard. So let's talk about the vision of the house for those that have hopped on. Uh, all of the huge compound that you saw that literally goes all the way around one side and it goes around the total other side. As you can see, it's a fence. It's uh, walled. It's walled up all around total privacy. And that huge, huge backyard, we plan to put swings out there and slides and a little play you know, what we call the play area and stuff for the kids. And then I have a vision of this gazebo, thatched roof gazebo, where you have the Ashton, tell them about what you all call the bride. We say a barbecue. We say a grill. Yeah. You all say the bride. I don't bride. know why you guys say barbecue, because barbecue is like a sauce. So. No, barbecue. <laughs> can say hey we're going to be barbecuing today you are you barbecuing so barbecuing and grilling are the same oh wow well, we say so, bride. But then at the same time at the same time, bride bride but i wonder what is bride derived from it's probably some dutch word or i don't even know if it's a british word it's bride bride what does bride come from originally well we're going to learn how to bride okay i see your mom and dad back there i want to get your dad on too soon so they can see who's helping us pull this whole thing together hmm? Here comes dad. We see you, dad. <laughs> this is, is the man that's been behind like, the scenes. Ash it might not look that far away, but from here to that house is quite, quite yeah. far. That, that, that. Tell your dad to come on. This is everybody that's watching. I want you guys to just start saying thank you, Mr. Preggy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we can that, show him some that, love because you, we, are, everyone, we're asking everyone to thank you. <laughs> to thank you and Shaz for all the behind the scene work that it took to pull this house out, especially yeah, right before Christmas. Christmas. I want everyone to see. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? God Amen. did it. Amen. Amen. And let God me let you talk faithful. to the people. Both. Mm -hmm. Let me hear from you, you and Shaz. Both. What do you want to say to the people? Uh, I just want to say uh, today, Dr. Bailey, I thank God for his goodness. God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. And I thank you. Uh, I thank God for this, uh, the, this property, and the, the vision house, and what God is going to do and touch lives of all the children, the orphans, and do something amazing. And God has really put something in your heart and in your spirit. And I believe that through this, God is going to enlarge your territory of blessing because your heart, especially for the orphans and the vulnerable kids, the poor families, and, 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 and God is going to transform uh, what you have just did and what God has blessed us with here in South Africa, Johannesburg, always uh, uh, what an area that God has to bring us to. But I believe that God is starting something new. Is starting, uh, no matter we went through the pandemic, 2021 is a year that God is starting something new and great things. I believe this year is going to be a year like we never had before. So when we're coming out of the pandemic with, with the new vaccines, but I believe God is restoring, he's transforming, and uh, it's a new beginning. beginning for greater things. So thank you, uh, Dr. Bailey. Thank you for your heart that you have. We love you unconditionally. There's no words I can express the love that we have for you. And uh, because your heart is always to love and to care and to always be there and uh, to reach out. And, uh, and that's what we appreciate so much. I want the people to know throughout the world, I want them to know what a woman of God you are. It must come from people like us <clears throat> all the way, many miles, thousands of miles in another world to know what your heart is all about. So I'm speaking all the way from South Africa, Johannesburg, 
in the district of four ways today. And thank you, Dr. Bailey, for a wonderful woman of God. Amen. We want to thank God for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Before you go, Dr. Bailey, to all the sponsors, and all the partners that has caught the vision and whatever seeds they are sowing, they sowing into fertile ground. And God is just going to do something new to all the partners and all the sponsors in their lives because they're sowing into a good ground. They're sowing into a woman, Dr. Bailey, who is a woman that is so faithful. And if they sow to a woman like you, God is going to do something great. So I thank you again. And to the ministry, we thank you so much uh, for what God has started. So I give God all the praises today, all the glory, because we see what he has done. Uh, I have so much of plans. Uh, my mind is opening. The ideas. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a transformation in the next few weeks. And even as we do this transformation, uh, it's going to be great. Uh, so there's going to be change. We're looking at it like it today. But uh, I'm saying in the next two weeks, there's going to be a transformation. So my families, my partners, Dr. Bailey's partners, there's going to be a total uh, transformation. And God is starting something great. And today we're just going to all agree and say, thank you, Lord, for what <laughs> has started. Amen. Amen. We want to hear from Shaz, too. We thank you so much, Mama Shaz. <laughs> Not a problem at all, Dr. Bailey. We just want to say a very, very big thank you to all the ministry partners, people that have partnered with your ministry to, to bring this to life. And, and we want to say, don't stop sowing because the more you sow into fertile soil, the more God is going to bless yeah. you with. So we just want to say thank you for your vision. Mm. And, you know, um, we're always there to help with your vision. And this is you. Mm, this amen. is all you. This is your vision coming to life. And we're going to document everything that will probably be on your website so people can go in and see the transformation that you and your ministry are making and the partners are making. So we just want to say God bless you all and thank you so much. And I just want to add, Doc, you know, to all the partners and things, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an easy road getting here. Uh, you know, even right now, it's not easy because, you know, we have to, we want certain things done. And uh, my parents are very strong on that. Um, you know, there, there needs to be excellence in everything. Uh, when the, um, you know, when, when the official uh, handover of the property comes to us, we need mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. sure that we are happy with the standard, with yeah. the quality, which my dad was busy sorting out now. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to tell everyone as well, it, it's not, it was not an easy road. The devil just came and came and came and came and came. And all of us, not just us, not just Doc, but every single Amen. one of us was standing Amen. together and Amen. praying. And we said, God, you know why you've, you've I mean, you've, it, it, this is God's property. And you know why you've done this. You know the, the plans and purpose behind this. And each of you, I want you to know, like there was times where at 12 o'clock in the night, we're busy having meetings. At 2 o'clock in the morning, we're busy having meetings with contractors. Oh, yeah. you know, it's, not, it's not easy oh, yes. just to buy a property and just to do it. I mean, you know, you're not just, sign a piece of paper and it's done. It's all the other uh, aspects to this, to ensuring that it gets done. So, you know, on behalf of, of uh, my family and even, um, you know, I want to thank Doc, uh, but you know, most I want to thank every single ministry partner, every single person. Amen. This is Absolutely. your seat. Partners, so every single partners, person that partners. has own seat, yes. this is yes. your house. Yes. This house belongs yes. to all of us. Yes. This is not just Dr. Bailey's house. This is not just anybody's house. Mm -hmm. This house belongs to all of yeah. you that have own be whatever it may be however it may be and however it will be this house belongs to us so as you look at it today i mean you i showed you the size of the pool this is like an athletic pool there's at least 50 people can go inside can, this can pool. you show us again ashton the size of the pool i didn't get to see it i didn't see it's, oh my it's, goodness it is, it's it's huge i mean i'm a pretty big guy so if i go in this pool i'm only going to take maybe one tile and there's hundreds and thousands <laughs> of tiles around here so, I mean, it, you we're know, gonna we're going to have pool. My dad say? said, it's, my dad say? said it's, it's definitely bigger than our pool. <laughs> so, so we're going to have to put a, a, 
we don't have to put a fence around it, build all the way around it because of the kids. But I wanted to say this, uh, <laughs> when you were talking, I immediately, I was envisioning the team from America, us coming over and literally being there in the house with the kids, with all the beds and me in the kitchen cooking for everybody, the team that comes over, uh -huh. the kids, and you have enough kids to keep supplying in that house. And we have another surprise for you. I'm going to try to uh, put the pictures up as well. I don't know if Ashton told you, but Yolanda, uh, Culture Sensation, which is a, a whole ministry vision that God has given her with teaching children how to learn through their senses and, and her computers and desk and chairs and all of the equipment, brand new computers still inside of the boxes, brand new. I mean, everything for a whole computer lab for children, little computers and little, we are shipping all of that to South Africa for wow. there in Salisbury so that they can have a, you should see the pictures. It is all first class. I wish Ashton was at a place where we can put them up on the screen. Uh, if you'll take this and, and um, We're just making and, our way into the house because it's raining uh, the right pictures now. Pictures of the, everybody. Okay, okay. Oh my, that yard is so large. Oh Guys, we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody don't back up, don't, don't, don't back up off of us now. I see mushrooms in the yard has grown up so much. <laughs> the mushrooms. Yeah, there are some mushrooms there. We're gonna put a garden back there and start selling stuff to help pay for the uh, kids and everything to have food oh, for yeah. food, an organic garden. Dad, I think you had an idea of an organic garden, a vegetable garden. So the kids can eat organic. And when the teams come over, they can eat organic. Uh, Brandy sending the pictures to you on WhatsApp of the computer labs and, the, and everything that we're gonna be sending over. Wow. God is good all the time, man. It's about so four or five pictures he's sending. Amen. I'm so excited, wow. That's all and that's all for your kids amen yeah. that's the beginning i need everybody to pray that um that the airports and everything will at least be open back by april or may because over this pandemic we take authority over the uh, decree that they will not require a vaccine and one of the biggest thing is we pray open borders again concerning yes. travel yes. and being able to come in there because until we're able to get there Preggy and Shaz I can't thank you amongst your orphans you got 12,000 what 12,500 yes. 12,700 that will be rotating yes. in and out of there bringing them yes. for a vision house uh, weekend and time so that they can be around opulence and have people to come in and just speak into their life. And the most powerful thing is while you're running things there and holding the front there, you two on this end, we're here at the Vision House in Atlanta where we're taking in teen girls pregnant, um, girls that are questioning and struggling with their sexuality, girls that have been rescued out of human trafficking. So we got construction projects going on here now. Uh, when we got windows at the bottom, we're believing for somebody to come in and put our windows in. Oh. We had gas lines that had to be done and toilets that's gotta be switched out and foundation just so much stuff that needs to be done so we are people on a mission Amen. and uh, Amen. i just want to share this right quick because i know you guys are, on, uh, are not in the rain anymore but my strong word this morning would have been faith for the manifestation to a transformation for this generation i know that sounds like real catchy words but listen to it it's going to take faith it's going to take trust in god we yes. see the direction that the generation is going. We see the direction that the nations are going. Yes. We see the direction there, there are more there are more orphan kids. There's 150 million displaced people worldwide. We see the type of things that's happening even in South Africa with gender-based violence. We plan to even have some weekend times there where girls come in that have been victims of gender-based violence and, <laughs> and, and girl who pay bringing girls in, young girls that have been rescued up as child brides. I mean, and the list just goes on. But we see the challenges, not just in South Africa, but on our side here, what's happening in our nation. 43% of almost 50% of every unborn child is aborted, is, is completely killed amongst African-American community. So our death rate has exceeded our birth rate. So we're saying we can't talk about it, Shaz, as women, uh, Preggy, as men, we cannot be a body of believers. Wake 
up, I, I when I'm up at three, three and four, five o'clock in the morning, I'm like, what's wrong with people's minds? Lord, shake them, wake them yes. up. Can't they sense oh. the urgency of the hour that there's a pivot window of time that if we don't get our head together, our heart together, our life together, even our bodies, what we've all been going through through this pandemic has made us realize how Pastor Winston was sharing this morning. And I told Val to resend me her confessions, how Pastor Winston, every single, he doesn't play with it, making the confessions over his pancreas, his liver, his heart, his right blood cells, his red blood cells, speaking to uh, coming against diabetes and high blood pressure. Because the enemy, he wants to come after our body because with this pandemic, he wants to try to shut us down. But our bodies, we're going to have to do things that we've never done before, eat like we've never eaten before, exercise like we've never done before, pray like we've never prayed before, like we've never fasted before in the world. In other words, it's a different time is a different season and what the enemy wants is whispering sounds that people think is just unbelief and lethargy and apathy not allowing and wanting people to rise up and go that extra mile the word of god says if they tell you to go one mile this is how he says your head must be for the revival and for the move of god if they ask you to go one mile tell yourself tell your head Talk to yourself. Go the extra mile. Uh, like mm -hmm. Ashton was saying, at midnight, late night calls, you've been meeting with contractors. Midnight, past midnight. For us on, on this end, uh, and we know what it was like when we were having to deal with getting the money wired over three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. So he's saying for this out, it's going to require go the extra mile. If they ask for your shirt, give them your coat. Even if he said they smite one cheek, turn the other. In other words, he's saying posture yourself, posture your mind in order for there to be the kind of transformation to change this generation and to impact nations is going to take faith. I'm thinking, Craigie, right now, and the reason why my mind is like I am and the, my persona is like it is, is that God baptized me in this kind of mentality. One of the nations that experienced transformation, you know historically that back in the days of Idi Amin, when he expelled all the Asians out of uh, Uganda, and many Asians fled to Tanzania. They fled to um, to Kenya. Many Indians fled to Tanzania. And we, I was there, 21 years old, at the end of that regime, going to bed at night to gunshots and bombs and the stench of dead bodies. And I'm thinking, how could I be groomed? How could I be uh, baptized? How can I cut my teeth on seeing nations that are in devastation? I don't know if you know, but Myanmar, which was once Burma, on today, I think as a result of yesterday, has been, a, it's a military coup. They took over Myanmar. The, I don't know, we've heard that China's definitely taken over Myanmar. And I'm saying yep. to people, you better, how can people be asleep? How can you, like for me in the morning, I spring out of bed when it's three and four o'clock and four, I'm something waking me up. I can't lay back down. I can't walk. I'm in there listening. And, and, and so there's something inside of me that says, get ready, get ready, get ready. You know, be alert. Don't be yep. the five foolish versions that didn't keep any oil trimmed in their lamp. But there's something that says, like Isaiah, don't you be a sleeping dog, be alert. Yep. Be intentional, be deliberate. In Uganda, with me cutting my teeth on that and seeing all those dead bodies and mass graves, I, I was a part of a team. And I'll call out their names. Susan Sally, Akiki wow. Muyu, Daniel Nkata, <laughs> Isaac Belinda, Patrick Chabuka. And they began to come together and fast and pray and say, God, transform yes. our nation. The only hope for Uganda is for God to visit our land. And God yes. transform Uganda who was once what Winston Churchill called the Pearl of Africa. And now once again, Uganda is back up on her feet. We saw the yes. very same thing happen in Rwanda with the Rwanda genocide, country completely devastated. Looked like there's absolutely no hope at all. And then again, the church is not the government. The government didn't turn it around. The ecclesia, the people of God says, we demand a transformation. We demand a manifestation. And it doesn't come by wimpy, pimpy, weak, lazy, slowful believers. It's for people who are saying it's time for a demonstration. It's time for a manifestation. So the whole nation began to be transformed after 1 million people were slaughtered, the Hutus against the Tutsis and mass genocide. But look at Rwanda today. She's back up on her feet. She's been transformed. Last country, I want to give an example, Colombia. 
the mass drug cartel. Yes. They were slaughtering yes. and killing people. People were afraid to go out of their houses. And the believers, the church of the living God, by faith said, enough is enough. And the young people, where are the young people today? 25, 26, 41, 42. Where are they? 20, 21. That are saying, that my assignment is not 45 and above. My assignment is not 55 and above. It's my time to lead. It's my time to take the battle to the enemy's gate. Like we did when we were their ages, that there is a need for transformation. Think about your own country, South Africa, during the days of apartheid, all the slaughtering, all the killing, all the mass instability that South Africa went through. But God raised up a group of people that cried out to God and said, enough is enough. And a transformation came in South Africa. Now the born freeze, the born freeze. Now it's their time to lead. It's their time to lead a move of God. Just like here in this land, it's their time to lead. And it's going to take a move of God, but by faith is what it's going to take by faith for a manifestation to bring the kind of transformation, not just something on the surface. I mean, a manifested transformation. Will you all say that with me? A manifested transformation. Like I can actually see a change, a manifested transformation. Say it with me again, a manifested transformation. That means where does that begin? Transformation begins in your heart. You change, I change, our mind changes. We're, if we were a type of people that were not disciplined before, we're disciplined now. If we were a type of people that were not patient before, we're patient now. If we were a type of people that weren't, unfor weren't forgiving before, we're forgiving now. If we're a type of people that weren't loving before, we're loving now. If we're a type of people that were not spiritually disciplined, we're disciplined now. The change comes inside. Something says, hey, it's a new time. The times require for us to do things like we've done with getting the vision house and the house here. Because to be honest, Preggy, it's time to put up or shut up. Yes. It's time to Come manifest. On. It's been enough yes. conferences, enough preaching, churches everywhere. But for all those orphan children, so many displaced orphan children in South Africa alone and around the world. Those children don't want to hear just preaching and teaching. Yep. They need a roof over their head. They need Come a meal on, on the on. table. They need clothes on their back. Yes. Jesus says, when I was hungry, you fed me. Yes. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. Notice this. He never said this, Chaz. He, Jesus never said this. When I was thirsty, you prayed for me. He didn't say that. That's true. When I was hungry, mm. you prophesied to me. He didn't say that. Yeah. When I was naked, you fasted for me. He didn't say that. When I was without shelter, you had a conference for me. He didn't say that. When I was hungry, you fed me. You did something. I'm speaking to this generation. It's time. I've been, I, I've been stirred and said, God, where's the passion in their life that I had at 21? That I couldn't sleep. And we went to the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro and fasted and prayed. And I had malaria while I was going through this. And everybody said, Doc, you should turn back. I'm like, I can't turn back. I want a visitation from God. And sure enough, somewhere in the middle of the night, the rest of the team had started before me. We were tucked in a mosquito net. Then we were set ourselves for a 40 day fast and we're not coming back. Each one of us says we want a visitation from God. They started before me. I was the baby in the group. I was a little tender American in the group. But I was desperate, like Catherine Kuhlman, desperate, like those of old, desperate, like Kenneth Hagen, desperate, like A.A. Allen, A. A. Allen, desperate, like Seymour, desperate for a move of God to see God. I said, God, you got to visit me first. And oh, sure man. enough, he manifested himself in the middle of the night and came in that room. And I looked around and I was like, they can't see this. Yes. You can see this like, and it was like just like Paul the Apostle, where there was this bright light and speaking through the light, and we were communicating deep, calling unto the deep. I was 21 years old. I was 21 years old, and it marked my life forever. No rebellion, no rebellion was gone. Bad attitude gone. Flesh dominating gone. Lethargy gone lukewarmness gone a passion and and when when during the encounter when it's over he touched my hands and left a mark in my hand so it would be evidence that he had visited me so when i woke up and i showed him i said guys look at my hands 
And they said, why didn't you wake us up? Susan, Sally, and the Kiki Moo, you can attest to this. And I said, look, the mosquito net is still intact. So you see, I could not have come out and done anything. And the encounter was so powerful. It was like Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. I couldn't tell whether it was a long time or a short time. All I know that he touched me. He touched touched me. He touched me. When he touched me, it affected my mind. It affected my attitude. It affected my heart. It affected my priority. And from that day, I put my hands to the plow 41 years ago and never looked back. Mm. Never looked Amen. back. Amen. Never looked uh, back. Mm. Where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God of Daniel? I'm speaking to young people now. Where is that God in your life? You're gonna keep letting your flesh dictate you. You're still gonna keep letting your mind lie to you. Put, and the way the devil tries to find out whether you're listening, he'll put stupid stuff in your mind, make you think it's real and see if you will utter it. Hmm, he listens. Hmm, she listens. And he takes it like a string and tugs you. You've got to sell out. We've got to sell out. And more importantly, I speak to the church of the living God today. And whenever this play, you share this and share this. The days of preaching only, the days of teaching only, the days of talking only, the days of praying only, they're over. It must be a demonstration and a manifestation to our prayers, a manifestation mm -hmm. to our declarations. There must be not only a manifestation, but let's go even deeper, Preggy. There must be a complete transformation, like the transformation in your nation, like the transformation in Colombia, like the transformation in Uganda, like the transformation in Rwanda. You can go to Rwanda right now and see, I've been there. You can go to Uganda, I've been there, and I've seen with my own eyes, I've witnessed the transformation. Colombia, I've been there, I've seen the transformation. Where is the transformation that is needed in South Africa today where your young people are embracing the wicked lifestyles, the immoral lifestyles that we've exported to you? Mm. Lifestyles that we know don't reflect the word of God. And this generation will never hear this generation more than will never hear from us as much as they will hear from each other. Mm -hmm. So why, why trapped in silence? Where is your passion? Where's your conviction? Where's your calling? I'm speaking to Ashton, Brandy, Terry, Aisha. I'm speaking to all of them that age group. It's your time to lead. It's your front. It's your hour. It's your season to lead. Least we lose this generation. And they've already recorded that their age group, they're saying they will be the last Christian generation. That's what the, 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 they're saying. But I say it's a lie. Yes. Amen. They will not be the last Christian generation. But if they don't get up and do something, they will be. But I believe that, like Val said, somebody's going to hear my voice. I'm speaking to millennials and Generation Z that are saying, Doc, you don't have to beg us. You don't have to plead. I've been looking for a leader like you. I've been come looking on, for someone on. that's going to pour into you. Amen. There are some young people out there that says, we see the statistics of what's happening to us. We are looking at the numbers. We're looking at the reality. We can't keep dragging our feet the time is now i'm speaking to one voice millennials i'm speaking to millennials around the world not just in the united states reach out to us right now 336-917-2630 if you're in the united states if you're watching by way of this facebook or youtube or whatever facebook direct message me it's patricia bailey for those of you that are watching you can email me at pat bailey scope at gmail.com. I'm asking you to reach out in whatever form you can to connect to me through Instagram, Dr. Bailey, official Dr. Bailey. I want to know who you are. I want to pour in your life. I want to mentor you because I'm determined we're not going to see what we're doing in rescuing these seeds, Preggy, with that vision uh -huh. out there. Uh -huh. Every last one of those 12,700 orphans you all have, Shaz and Preggy. Uh -huh. Every last one of them, I prophesy to them right now. Every 12,700 of one of those, of every one of those children is a seed, a seed Come of on. destiny, a seed of the righteous. Come on. I Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, that's what we've been Thank you, Lord.
Father, I thank you, Father, for your goodness. I thank you for your greatness today. And I thank you, Father, for the transformation because you are a great and wonderful God. And we thank you for what you have started and the greater things that you're going to do now. So we thank you for the partners. We thank you for the sponsorship. We thank you for your goodness, Father. Thank you, Father, even as the signals come through, Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you today, Father. Every yokes of the enemy would be destroyed. Everything that hinders this, Father, that even as we pray and reach out to the nations, Father God, that you yes, would yes, take yes, control. Yes, yes, and we are that house in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. For oh, Father, you work is us anything in the name can be done. When we call upon the name, every powers of the enemy would be broken today in the name of Jesus. We just give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father, that you are great and mighty God. We thank you for the transformation. We thank you for what you're going to do to the orphans, Father, through the vision house, Father God. We thank you if you have started a great thing in our nation, the continent of Africa, Father, that Dr. Bailey has a vision, a heart, Father, the passion that she has for the children of God, Lord. I thank you for the woman that you have sent to the nation of the continent of Africa, God, to start transformation, Father, a new thing, Father, where lives and people's lives, children's orphans would change, Father. They would live a better life, my God. They wouldn't live in places, Father God, where in a rainy day like this, Father, water comes into those shacks. Father, but we pray for the transformation, even, even as Lord, you have led into Dr. Bailey's heart, Father. I thank you for the woman that you, you, you have ministered to her to see the cry of our people in the continent of Africa. We thank you today, Father. We just give you praises and thank you for what you are doing and what you have started. Today, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for your greatness. Thank you, God, that, Lord, we depend on you. Everything belongs to you, Father. This vision house is dedicated to you. Our lives are dedicated to you, Father God. Everything belongs to you. And all we can say to you today, Daddy, Abba, Father, we thank you. We praise you. Even when Dr. Bailey's been ministering, you know, people say the anointing from America to Africa, South Africa, I just felt my body like lightning. The goosebumps come all over me from United States to Africa. We thank you for the anointing, the power of God that would touch lives, whether we're in South Africa or Colombia or Russia, wherever it may be in Kenya, Ghana, I pray with the power of God, people's lives would change in the name of Jesus. I just thank you for your goodness. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. Yes, we dedicate you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank uh, Dr. Bailey, uh, our mom. Uh, you're truly a spiritual mom to us, our leader that we really look to, to mentor and to guide us. 
in the right part. And we are so blessed and honored to be part of your life where what God the is going to do. Those do and the partners and the sponsors to see what, what God is doing. So today, I just want to say before we end, Lord, thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Yeah. And all we can say, Father, we give you praise and all the glory belongs to you today. And thank you so much for everyone that's listening to us throughout the world, all the partners, all the sponsors, whoever that's part of us today. And Dr. Bailey, uh, we just love you and what God is doing and how God is ministering to your life. And God is just doing something new. And today, you know, we could say so much, but one thing I'm going to say is, Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, what you have started in the continent of Africa. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. And, and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank, you, you, Jesus. Jesus. thank, thank you, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You all just join in with me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We join and say thank you, Jesus. We join the angels. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, Thank for your goodness. Every single one. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, I want to thank you guys so much for being there. And um, I know you'll lay hands on the house. And uh, we just sanctify that house in the name of Jesus. God gave us the house supernaturally. The money came in. And those of you that are watching, they want to be a part of this move of God worldwide not just the Vision House in South Africa, but here in Atlanta as well. And you say, I've been looking for a ministry. I've been looking for people that I can connect with. You see, Preggy and Shaz, they have their own ministry. They have 12,700 orphans. So I'm like, let's connect together. The computer lab and center that we're bringing to South Africa, we're like, let's help each other. Let's strengthen each other. Let's demonstrate a model of the kingdom of Almighty God. Wow. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Here's a center here. There's a center there. We want to come and see you. Come and join us in South Africa. Come and join us here in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. Let's one can put a thousand of and two can put 10,000 to flight. We must decree and declare a total transformation to this. I can't wait. We're working on everything it takes to get in there from the beds in there to uh, on, stripping up the, the, the tile. I know it's going to be a total transformation. <laughs> I know your mind, Preggy. Me I'm and your excited. mind are just going like, I'm you know. I, I'm excited. I, I, I already have in my mind. Yes, come but, on. Oh, it was a pomegranate. It was a pomegranate. It's growing yeah. here. Brandy figured out it was a Oh my, and do you know the medicinal purposes of the pomegranate? You got a whole tree here. <laughs> Full of it. Oh my, I love pomegranates. Oh wow. my gosh. And, and while and I'm in Zoom, I can, you see there's the cross here as well. You know, so I believe Where? it's dedicated to God. You can you oh, see? There's a cross there? Yes, mm -hmm. you can see there. Wow. Ashton, can you come closer? Ashton, can you get it closer? Oh, I see. Oh my goodness. Is that Jesus on the cross? Or was it just the cross? No. <laughs> it's like a rose. I can't see. I'm like, is that Jesus on the cross? Let me put my glasses on. Well, he's not on the cross. He rose. Okay. Okay. Now rose. we see. Yeah, he's yeah. off the cross. Oh my goodness. Well, I think that's the sign. Wow. wow. Right. Yeah, so that is good. That is good. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I can't wait to see we, we take possession. And we decree that those on that side will do the right thing and do what they're supposed to do so that they can be blessed and their seed will be blessed. Come because on, this come is on, a property now. That it yes. is the almighty God. <laughs> Amen. 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 So are but we going to get to go Lord. inside? Are y'all going to take the people? Is Ashton taking us inside of the house at all? Yeah, yeah we, we can. <laughs> can do you that. can or you cannot? I can, I can. Okay. Well, guys, this is guys want to say hi to Anne. That's the agent, Anne. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Anne. And so many people in America are praying for you. They're praying for your family. 
They are so many people in America are praying for you. They're praying for your family because you now are a part of the vision of this ministry for the children. And so we thank God and that God will bless your hands and God will bless your business and everything that you put your hands to, it will prosper in the name of Jesus. On our Periscope account alone, there's 20,000 people on that particular account that follow us. So that's a lot of people out there to be praying for you in Jesus' Thank mighty name. You. May you be blessed going in. May you be blessed coming out. And may everything you put your hands to, may it prosper. May your family stay healed and protected from COVID in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, so for those of you who don't know, Anne was, the agent, bit... Anne was the agent for this house. Awesome lady. So this is the inside. Tell, tell Anne there's going to be other people that want to buy property. Ashton, I don't know if you can yes. I said, tell Anne there's going to be other people in America that want to buy properties there. Make sure Anne hears me. Yeah. There'll be other people that want to buy properties there. <laughs> tell her, so make sure she does us right, okay? Yes, and, and many of my friends, they're watching, they are watching, they are watching. Okay, Ashton, I'm in your hands. Awesome. So this is the, and this is like a dining area here. So the lounge open plan dining area. Behind me is the kitchen. Um, so this is what uh, the kitchen looks like at the moment. Um, and then that door, if I can just go, oh, and there's a little uh, sink here on this side. Uh, where the dishes and stuff will be washed. And then... I miss South oh, Africa. It's raining. it's raining bad. That that room there is a um, what we call a helper's quarter. So which we obviously will convert into another bedroom, probably a fourth or a fifth bedroom. Which we, uh, we call a maid's quarter, a maid's quarters. Mm -hmm. I guess we also say that, but uh, I think some people have gone to say like... Say, a maid is like helper. We like to say helper too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is bedroom number one. Uh, it is quite large, uh, and there's some and, closet uh, space here with a window on there. And this overlooks the one side of the house. We're gonna have bunk so beds. We have bunk beds next to. Yeah. So this is bedroom one, and then we go to bedroom number two. There's some closet space there again shelves on this side windows there and this overlooks the front uh, outside of the house and then we have a linen closet what we call a linen closet yeah, in the, we call this, so. this is the first bathroom um in here with the sink and mm -hmm. stuff like that in there and then we got the some stairs here. Is that tiled gray? Is that tiled gray? Yeah, this is tiled on the bottom half. Okay. And then the top half is just wall. Then you go up some stairs here. Um, one, two, three stairs. And what does that lead to? This leads to the master bedroom. Oh, um, so this is the master bedroom, which is rather large. Um, it is quite big in here. And then this obviously looks out onto a bit of the pool and the balcony and the front yard in there. And then this also has a walk-in closet um, in here. So Whoa. this is a closet. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and then this is bathroom number two, which has a shower in there. And then a window, and obviously a bathtub in the back. There. We can't make, wait for all the missions teams to start coming with us. T.O.P., Chris Scott, the crew, uh, Bishop Ed Smith and your crew, Tony Dunn, Bishop Tony Dunn and your crew, all those crews that are going in and out of South Africa all the time. Uh, Brenda and Tommy Todd, Pastor Brenda and Tommy Todd, Pastor Todd, and you guys no longer have to stay in hotels when you come through. You'll be right there at the Vision House with us. Yes. And then I'm just going to take you to the front mm -hmm. just to show you from the roadside what it looks like. There's a double garage here, so for the cars. 
Yeah, I'm converting and, that garage even to bedrooms. I'm going to take as yep. many kids as I can. And then actually here, what we said, um, I explained to Doc earlier, was this land belongs to us right here, up and until this wall. So there's a ton of space to go all the way back. So we want to break down that wall and move it to the front here and then wall it up here. So we have all this space as well. And then we can open out the garage into more space or another bedroom, actually another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's freezing. It's freezing a bit. What he's saying is on the other side of that wall, on the other side of the garage, open that up and build that out because that's all our land on the other side. I see that beautiful palm tree over in the corner. And of course you see it's a gated property. Also, Ashton didn't say this, that the estate itself Three is bedrooms. in Santon. Oh, there he is. Ashton, is it still freezing? It's still freezing. I see that beautiful palm tree over in the corner to the far right. And of course the gated area. Okay, I think he's dropped now. But anyway, we wanted you guys to be able to see it. I know you guys have been on here with us for a while. We want you on our team. And um, we'd love for you to be the team that's going with us to South Africa. Um, door, the borders were open. And then just like uh, us, they went through the same thing where they went through a second wave. And the president said, uh, shut things back down. But we've been invited uh, from Faith Broadcast Network, the largest Christian broadcast network in the entire continent of Africa and one of the largest in the continent of Europe. And, you know, we air on there every single week uh, live on Faith Broadcast Network and the dome, they've built a dome and it's been built for some time. It was supposed to dedicate it last year, but because of the pandemic, because of COVID, I wasn't able to come. So they've told me to mark off the month of April. So in, uh, March is going to be our so, that's why we're working so fast to get everything done here at the now say Vision House Atlanta instead of just the Teen Pregnancy Center, because obviously we're gonna be ministering to more than just teens. We've got 34 bids here. And I think that by tomorrow, we have another team coming in to volunteer a bit on tomorrow. Uh, we'll start showing you some of the bedrooms so you can start seeing some of the bedrooms for the children. And we are so inviting you to be a part of this with us. It would not be the same without you. I believe that I'm speaking to, I can start calling names that come to me right now, different women that pastor, different pastors' wives, different pastors who believe in rescuing this generation and, and helping to get their mindset in the right direction to answer their calling, to answer their calling. The enemy is after their calling. And um, we, instead of reinventing the wheel, let's connect together have whatever you want to do whatever curriculum you have here's the facility here's the facility come here it is that god has put it in your heart to do so we don't have to uh like we said reinvent the wheel and start from 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 the ground up we can start from right where we are so if you want to come and be a part i just got a phone i mean a message from um ronda Cole and then sylvia coates and different ones are saying they're coming down rebecca i forgot about rebecca rebecca's coming from new york city these women are very serious. And the men too, Mr. Booker was here a couple of days ago and uh, the house has sat for so long and squirrels had gotten up in the attic. So he was safeguarding things to keep the squirrels out. And also it's time to put our compassion and our conviction to where our, um, where our mouth is. So thank you so much for hopping on. I think Ashton is gone, is he gone now? Hi doc, sorry about that, I just... Um, tomorrow we will be parents and everything. I was trying to see the house on the front. Is it possible? It's still freezing. We'll be coming there many, many times. As you can see, this ministry, you can give me a full screen again, Brandon, and take them out because it still keeps dropping. Uh, as you can see, this is a ministry that doesn't just talk. We are manifesting. You're seeing the evidence. There's the evidence right before you. And last night, uh, Cheryl and Brandy were finishing up the edit 
to the new book, uh, which we could put that up, but we can't. Um, I first originally said I was going to name it the Black Patriots, but we included other ethnic groups and the history uh, with this being African American history. the history that's going to be in that book for you to read to your children and the book is our strategy against uh, a mindset and a culture that's anti-government anti-authority that's trying to knows that that's where the blessing lies and so they're endeavoring to push it in a curriculum in the school you know like America did everything wrong. We did some messed up stuff of my ancestors. We did horrible things to Indians. Not everything was bad. There were some things we got. So you don't want to miss that book. It is a tiny sneak preview of what's on it. Some of you can bring, since we don't have Ashton here to put it up on the screen here, but ask Terry to throw it up on Facebook uh, so that you can see it. But um, we write about men like uh, Peter Salem, who was the one who won the battle. Make sure I get it right. Peter Salem won the battle at, I think, Bunker Hill. Then there was um, also, um, who won the battle at Yorktown, James Lafayette, James Amistad Lafayette. And then there was Samuel Harris, who on three consecutive battles led the way, um, the, the regiment, the Rhode Island Regiment for three consecutive battles against the British and defeated them three different times, even when they didn't think that African-American soldiers, because George Washington in the beginning did not want African-American soldiers. He did not. Uh, but eventually things got so bad, he had to get all the help he could get. Then we write about Bernardo de Galvez, which is showing the Latino uh, contribution. Uh, Bernardo de Galvez uh, coming from the Spanish, Spain, Latin part of the uh, people groups who Pensacola for 300 years was under Spain. Most of us don't think about all that history of our country. You remember France occupied a territory. That's why you have the Louisiana Purchase and the whole French influence in uh, Louisiana, but, and Baton Rouge and all of that. Uh, but in Louis, uh, Pensacola was very strategic in us getting our nation's independent, pen, independence, Pensacola and Yorktown. So Pensacola was won by Bernardo de Galvez. And when George Washington had run out of money and run out of resources, Bernardo de Galvez sent $70,000. Can you imagine what that was equivalent to in those days? So really, you mean the Latin community rescued America? They didn't tell you that, did they? And sent a fleet of horses. So we say that when George Washington ran out of resources, Bernardo de Galvez sent $70,000 and a fleet of horses. We want your children to know the history that has not been in our history books. And not only that, he cut off the supplies of the British there from the Gulf of Mexico, where then now uh, George Washington's uh, troops and all could get all the supplies they need and the British supplies were cut off. So it's a phenomenal book. We even want, write about uh, Harriet Tubman, the first woman ever in the history of the United States to lead the first military uh, expedition. And we say that it wasn't just uh, the, the victory of the expedition wasn't just her intuition, but it was her spirit led life. Powerful book. I enjoyed writing this. And so I can't wait for you to get it and you can have it in time enough. Uh, we're hoping before the end of uh, February to get it in your hands so that you can be reading it to your children for African American History Month. So you want to go ahead on and we're going to start doing pre-order sales because we'll be able to flip the book in a few days. So that's all we got for you today. Don't forget to go to www.myshopify.com and Val again every single day. You see all the different Afrocentric print earrings and I'll start wearing some of the other jewelry. Uh, everything I'm wearing, this is all her voice. This is her voice. And from different parts of the world, the proceeds go to the center here, the Vision House, where we will be ministering to teen pregnant uh, young girls, as well as those been rescued out of uh, human trafficking. It's a safe house here. Also, our books, I'm glad God made me girl. I'm glad God made me boy. We've got more being shipped to us right now. So we have more books now. People have been ordering them and we're signing. So they're just affirming the gender of your son and daughter and affirming the gender of your granddaughter and grandson and revolting against the confusion that they're endeavoring to indoctrinate our children with concerning um, their philosophies and indoctrination of gender. So we're not just talking, we have strategies.
we have things that we've actually put in place to combat all the wiles of the enemy. So it's coming up March the 4th through the 7th. Who has a lot to cover this morning? On a move, women on a mission. the world and we're going to be dealing with real issues real issues not just dealing with them not just talking about them not just having a panel discussion question about them, but having a logistical plan that we implement during these few days between the 4th and the 7th. So we are now modeling a demonstration. So it's going to be different than any type of Zoom that you or any type because it's a conclave summit. We don't just come together to talk about something. We have logistical plans that we have put in motion. So, so those of you women that were uh, galvanized together in our last, uh, so I think it was back, boy, we want on could hook that with us. We are speakers for so are men and women. I'm really saying that um we need need to just open the whole thing up to men and women. It happened last time in October. The men were like, well, what about us? Of course, we're going to be dealing with solutions and things that you can do with those of you that have thought about fostering. Those of you that have thought about the dog, yeah, it just goes on and on and on. So we want to rescue them. We have school teachers and school board administrators that are going to be dealing with us about education because all these uh, mountains and components that we're dealing with are dealing with culture. What it's going to take to transform culture. It, Breeds mindsets, bends mindsets in a particular way of thinking. So, we're going to have the people that are specialists in that particular area. So, we've covered so, we've covered her voice, we've covered the new book, we've covered um, I'm glad God made me a girl, I'm glad God made me a boy. And he begins to talk to me and, and, and I'm always saying, Lord, show me, show me, show me my part for this generation to go and the world to transform culture to the culture of Christ. And I'm asking you, my friend, as we end, the assignment that we have before us for this age, it's real, guys. Did you just hear me say that Myanmar, which was once Burma, like some people are like, why is she talking about Myanmar and Burma? These are the signs of the times. A military regime just took over after their elections. They had legitimate elections. A military regime just came in and just took over. Are you paying attention to some of the things that are being legislated? Not just in this administration, the previous one as well. I'm a believer. I'm a gatekeeper. I'm a watchman on the wall. I'm not a politician. We are citizens of heaven to our care, to show and model his love, demonstrate his love to rescue the perishing. And if you're on God's side, I want you on my side. I want us to link up together. And let's believe, make a change. We 
Till next time, this is Dr. Pat. This is all we got for you every day. I say, I want to hear from you. You should know by now, 336-917-2630 or, or direct message me. Or you can, I think I did that. Oh, text me so you can get the information. Uh, 310 347 God bless you. Have a 